Welcome to GC Cars. My name is Eric and this is the 2022 Honda Accord Hybrid. And if you end up liking the video, please make sure to like and subscribe because the more subscribers I have, the more cars and the cooler the cars I can show you every single week on this channel. But with that being said, let's start talking about the exterior of the Accord. And it's an Accord. You've, you've all seen them. It doesn't even matter if you live somewhere where they don't sell the Accord. You've seen them in either movies or other videos on YouTube. So you know the Accord and you have an idea of if you like it or not. Personally, I think it actually looks really good. It's been aging really, really well. It has some great body lines. The general shape is good. The big wheels look fantastic, even though they're very easy to scrape, as some of the journalists apparently have found out if you're looking at them. And other than that, you have two colors, black and this platinum white pearl. And I gotta say, this platinum white pearl is actually really nice because it's flaky and it's, it's a very, very nice white. But yeah, I like it. You already know if you like it or not, but that's it. Let's, let's talk about the interior. That might be a little bit more interesting. All right, let's talk Accord interior. This is the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes? You know what I mean. <laughs> of a comfortable cruiser. This is what you need to ace in terms of if you're Honda. And they did. This is really nice. I really like this. Everything is soft. Everything you touch, nice and soft. Leathers, it feels good. It looks good, the materials and quality are really good. Of course, you do have some plastics, but they all look very good. No piano black, except for around the infotainment. This is all gonna hold up well, even if you have 100,000 kilometers on this car, it will still look decent. Then we have this trim, which is plastic, but it looks really convincing. Like until the moment you touch it, you feel like you, you think that's wood. I've literally seen wood trim in cars that looks more like plastic than this plastic trim. <laughs> it's really good. Looks really nice. Usability is really good because they have retained all the physical buttons for the A-Track, for the infotainment. It is really well done. Then we have our gauge cluster, which is right side is a speedometer, regular one. Left side is a screen, so we can customize what we want to have. The efficiency, where the power is going, trip odometer, all that. You can completely customize it. And our infotainment, not the biggest one. That's what you kind of expect when a car is a couple of years old, right? And the new generation is due next year as far as I'm, as far as I know. But this still works really well. The Honda infotainment is very customizable. You can put like shortcuts up top to whatever you need. It has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both wireless. Really nice. So this awesome in terms of functionality. And speaking of phones, you have a phone charger down here, which you can physically separate, which is what I love because that just encourages texting. And driving good job Honda other than that got sunroof up here manual shape but that's totally fine because it's easy to reach the seats are comfy but there's one thing about these seats it's always a little bit individual right depending on your body type but both me and a passenger felt on a two-hour drive that it was it didn't give us enough lumbar support so a little bit more lumbar support would have been nice because at, at the end of the two-hour trip we're kind of feeling like oh uh, a little iffy and the, the back wasn't feeling perfect. But other than that, especially on shorter trips, they're nice. And if your body type is a little different than me, five foot seven hundred and twenty five pounds, then you should be fine, I reckon. Now, the back seats, of course, are important and they are heated just like the seats up in front, which, by the way, also have ventilation, although not very strong one. <laughs> uh, the, the, the space, of course, is very good. You have plenty of space for adults, kids, whatever you need, baby seats. It is comfy. You have like I said, the heated seats, you have USB-A slots. It is good. Very nice interior. Honestly, very comfy, very practical, except for some very minor things. I like it. Good job, Hannah. Let's take a quick look at the trunk in terms of storage, and then we go driving. Konnichiwa. Well, the trunk of the Hana Court, as you can see, is actually pretty spacious. So you can, if you're into kidnapping, you can easily get like, Two or three people in here four of them my size anyhow let's get out of here of course with a sedan the openings are always like kind of small but this is still fairly well like i was able to get like big boxes right here just have to kind of jam it a little but other than that it's really good really nice they have a protection that you can't have the key in there and close it it automatically opens back up that's why i couldn't close it for my shop that i do and you do have grocery bag hangers on both sides and if you need more space, just put down the second row and you got a lot more room for storage. 
But with that being said, let's go driving. Okay, now out on the road here in the Accord Hybrid, and as always, we wanted to start off with a launch. So let's put it into sport mode, turn off traction control, come to a full stop, and see how quick this Accord can accelerate. So, brake torquer, let's go. Okay, yeah, here comes the power. Noticeably a CVT, but we got a decent amount of power, I would say. Of course, we gotta remember, this is an Accord Hybrid. It is made to give from A to B comfortably and efficiently. Power isn't that important as long as we have all the passing power we need even on the highway, and we totally do. So let's get out of sport mode. Let's turn on traction control again and talk about our drivetrain. So we have a two liter inline four up front, and that has made it to a mild hybrid system, and a 1.1 kilowatt hour battery powers our motor. That combination of internal combustion engine and motor gives us up to 212 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque sent to the two front wheels. And like I said, for passing power, that is totally fine. On the highway, you do need to stomp on the gas a little more because it's mostly the internal combustion engine working at that point. But especially in the city, it is totally fine. And the nice thing is, because we have the hybrid and CVT combination, it is butter smooth. It is very comfortable to drive in the city, very smooth. The hybrid system gets you started from a stop without noise, without any stuttering or vibrations. And then the CVT takes over with the internal combustion engine, which means that you don't have any gear shifts and it's just smooth. I know people don't always like CVTs, especially if you do stuff like we just did. If you are on the throttle for a little longer, sometimes you just need to accelerate somewhere, right? There are situations where you do that. It will just simply not sound very pleasant because it just keeps holding the RPM, but that's the benefit of CVTs, right? Always keep it in the power band. And at the same time, why do you buy a mild hybrid? To have good efficiency. And at 598.7 kilometers driven, about half of that at highway speeds, half of that either in a traffic jam or in city speeds, I'm averaging 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers, which is very nice and very efficient. And because it's not a plug-in hybrid, you don't need to plug it in. It's literally just, I get off the gas, regenerate for braking, that's where it takes the energy from, charges up the battery, and then uses the motor to use that energy. Anyhow, we always do a transmission test, 50 kilometers an hour, and I'm just gonna floor it in all modes and see how quick it reacts. That was interesting, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what happened here was a very, very delayed response, but that was because we're actually, it turned off the internal combustion engine. So it was just in our motor, driving us and then I had to turn off the uh, turn in the combustion turn, sorry, turn on the combustion engine and give us the power if I'm just gonna get the engine to activate here and if I do the same thing now you'll notice a way more instantaneous response which is one of the benefits of a CVT right so instant response and as soon as they get off the, off the throttle the drafts drop we don't have to listen to anything like gear hang or any of that and it'll be nice and comfy so it being a mild hybrid, of course, there aren't only benefits to that compared to a plug-in hybrid. The main drawback is while we don't have to plug it in or have to get a charging station at home and all that, we just have limited range. Not all mild hybrid systems are actually able to drive in full electric mode. This one is, we can just simply put into EV mode, but it will only last us about a mile, so like a kilometer and a half, which isn't like amazing, but we still have the ability to do it if we need to. Well, let's talk about suspension. You know this road. This road is absolutely atrocious. It is absolutely horrible. But the Accord is actually really well done. That was one of my biggest surprises. I expected the Accord to be good, efficient, albeit not very exciting, which all was well, pretty accurate. But the suspension is actually really good. It is super comfy in here, even though we have pretty big wheels, but you don't really notice the wheels impacting right quality a ton. Would it still be better with like 17 inch wheels? Sure, but considering what we have, this is really good. Especially big bumps get absorbed really, really well and even minor kind of like imperfections on the road, you barely ever feel them. So this is one of the really good high points of this Accord, I think, is the right quality is great and noise and vibrations is about on par with what you expect for a car 
at this price point being maybe on the better end of cars at this price. So honestly, for what you buy this to go from A to B in a comfortable way, this is really, really good for that. Like I said, we can't go in full EV mode. Now we have EV mode on, so we can just cruise without using any of the gas. Right now we're just holding 50 kilometers an hour. And let's use that to talk about tech here real quick because tech, of course, is always a bit of an important thing. And the one thing I always want to have in a car, especially in a modern car, is front emergency braking. So that means, you know, you drive somewhere and suddenly the car in front of you slams the brake. Maybe you were just looking in your mirror, whatever it is, you didn't see it. The car warns you, beeps at you, and if it has to, it'll slam the brakes for you. I love those systems because it's a great safety layer. This one has it, and our remote mode just got canceled, just so you know. So it is very limited, but we can still do it. But we have that, emergency braking, we have blind spot monitoring, of course, and then we have the Honda semi-autonomous driving assist, but you know, on the highway can steer for you which works really well. The Honda system is actually really good. And the nice thing is it is not coupled to coupled to cruise control. So you can do either or, or combine them. That's the way I like it. Let's take a quick look at driving characteristics though. And it's always like very interesting because this Honda drives way better than you would expect. It actually has a lot more grip up front. So I, ha I had to do this twice, by the way, I'm doing this review the second time because the first time the audio was messed up and both times I had to open up the steering wheel after the initial turn in because I have more grip than I expect which normally doesn't happen so it drives very well it's very well balanced you can actually push it and you can feel the limit approaching even though the steering is dead but that doesn't really matter you only need that in emergency situations or when you for some reason you know feel like okay I want to have a little bit of fun driving this but that's not what the Accord is made for and like I've already said before, this is made to be go comfortable and easily and efficiently from A to B. And this is what the Accord Hybrid excels at. So let's send it off to the final thoughts. Look at the price and maybe the competition and see if this is the best pick in the segment or if you well, maybe you should go with something else. Let's go over there. Okay, final thoughts on the 2022 Honda Accord Touring hybrid and this is not an exciting car this is nothing that is necessarily fun or it'll be engaging to drive but that's totally not what honda set out to do here the honda core touring is an appliance an appliance that gets you from a to b in a comfortable efficient and safe manner and this is what the accord absolutely excels at it is comfy inside it drives extremely well still looks pretty good in my opinion and it is super efficient while also not giving you the hassle of the plug-in hybrid stuff where it's like more complicated and you might have to get a charger installed at home and yada 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 this is really good if you want to have a car from to get you and your family from a to b in an efficient way of course it's a little more expensive in the hybrid trim like it is here compared to the regular ones because as spec right here it clocks in at forty six thousand five hundred and ninety two dollars canadian that includes like a grand and a half in floor mat options and a bit of like weatherproofing. But other than that, I think that's a decent price. And personally, I enjoyed the week I spent with the Accord. It did well on the long trips. And in the end, all the savings in terms of fuel I did this week is good for the upcoming weeks. When we drive a few cars, it might be a little more exciting. So if you want something efficient, buy the Accord. It's really good. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you did, like I said, please subscribe and hit the bell because we upload reviews and POV test drives every single week about all sorts of cars. And we got some exciting stuff coming soon from EVs to sports cars to trucks and everything in between. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.